Hello and welcome to the Henry Riley's webinar to celebrate our 125th year and our focus on digital construction. Please feel free to contact any of us via the Twitter handles on your screen. Henry Riley was formed in 1890 and 125 years later we are still going strong. For a closer look at our timeline please visit our website. If you would like to celebrate with us then one way is to please use the hashtag HenryRiley125TH on Twitter. Over the last few years, Henry Riley have developed our understanding of digital construction or BIM, focusing on our role as a quantity surveyor or 5D BIM. Through our understanding of these new processes, we have also begun to develop our project management capabilities in digital construction. As we continue to learn and improve our understanding, we have been able to write a report for the RICS, Overview of a 5D BIM Project, and lucky enough to win a few awards, including one with the BIM for SME team, which included recognition for the best cost analysis. On to today's content, we have three presenters from Henry Riley who will take you through three areas of quantity surveying. Joe will be focusing on quantity extraction and pricing. Paul will discuss standardisation and auditing, which in some cases is a new role quantity surveyors are finding themselves undertaking. And finally, Adrian will look at how we are beginning to develop our life cycle costing understanding with the use of 3D models. Hello, my name is Joe and I'll be taking you through the quantification of the 3D model and some live link quantities. First up, we have automatic takeoff from a 3D model. This is Costex, which we use for quantification of the model and cost planning. You can manipulate the model in the viewer by turning layers such as the roof on and off and pan around the model to get a clearer picture of what's being built. You can also isolate certain layers, groups of objects or specific objects in the model tree to the left of the screen to see what exactly they are and where they are in the model. Other 5D software does similar things to Costex, although most do so in very different rate ways. The simplest way to take off a 3D model in Costex is to use a BIM template. These are inbuilt takeoff methods for different exports from different design software. I'm using the Revit general template because this is a DWFX file, which is obviously a Revit output. The template uses the object's default unit of measure and pulls the quantity from the object's data. The quants are pulled out into dimension groups, which are organized by object name and sometimes other data, such as diameters or sizes. This method works particularly well for doors and walls and the like, because def the default unit of measure tends to be the unit one would want to use in a cost plan. <clears throat> so it's just pulled in the dimensions down on the bottom left hand side and we can see it's pulled through the doors and walls. However, when you want to take off items such as steel, the default unit of measure tends to be the length of the steel member, whereas we would usually want the weight. In this instance, we can use a model map to find the data we want. Model maps allow you to choose which parameters are used as the default quantities and also lets us organise and present the data how we want it. In Costex, to do this, we open up our model map and use the schedule below the drawing which has all of the data from all of the objects listed out. We then simply click on a branch of the model tree and drag and drop the parameters into the mapping definition on the bottom left hand side. This can be done with one parameter as we've done with the folder names or for example length, or we can also use parameters to build formulas to create our own data. We've done this with the dimension group name to split new and existing work out, which is particularly useful if you're doing refurbishments or extensions. And we've also use this method for the weight where we've combined the length with the steel's line weight and a factor to change the units from millimetres to metres and kilograms to tonnes. So there we're just pulling through the length, adding in our steel's line weight and a factor, and then just adding in the unit of measure of tonnes. Um, once this has been completed for one type of steel, you can simply copy the mapping definition and paste it onto a new branch of the model tree and then change the line weight. Once you've gone through all of the beams and columns in the model, 
you import the dimension groups using your model map and your steel takeoff is done. So just changing the line weight. Closing down the model map and importing the dimensions. And as you can see, it's pulled through all the weight of all of the columns and beams. We pitted a colleague against the computer on this steelwork model, an exercise we refer to as turtle versus machine, and found the following benefits. A significant reduction in the time taken to complete the takeoff. The turtle took half a day, whereas the machine took a fraction of that time. Uh, we found more precise quantities, as we didn't have to rely on the increments of a scale rule. We used the actual member lengths, and we found more accurate quantities. Uh, there were some members on the 2D drawings that were basically hidden from view and were therefore hard to pick up. These were easily picked up by the model map. Using model maps, we can not only change the default quantity that is pulled through, we can also have multiple quantities. For example, here we have a map that takes the volume of the concrete walls of this building, but also uses the surface areas of the walls to calculate the formwork area required. Uh, So as we go down the mapping definition, we've got the volume and a custom quantity called formwork area with the unit of measure meters squared and using the surface areas of the walls which happen to be on this IFC model. And then when we import the quantities, we end up having the volume of the walls but also the formwork area as you're about to see. Once we have our quantities, we can live link them to whatever cost plan we want. We've used NRM1 by simply dragging and dropping them into the appropriate place in the cost plan. So in the steelwork section of NRM1, we simply drag and drop quantities and they are entered into the cost plan. The benefit of live linking the quantities is that when we get a revision, we can use the same model maps or BIM templates to update the quants, which are then automatically updated in the cost plan, giving you an updated cost. As you can see, here our pipework length is 13 metres. And after the revision, the quantity has automatically updated to 18 metres. That's me done, uh, over to Paul with standardization.